Hello everyone, we are on week 18 of our CSA shares and I will go over what we received in our shares this week, how to store each item, and then ideas on what to do with them. We'll jump right in. Um, oh, geez, sorry. The first time that's happened. Um, my stand wasn't working. Okay, I think we're good. I think it's secure. <laughs> Sorry about that. So we're gonna jump right in. We got one of two herbs, either dill or cilantro. Both get stored in the fridge um, in a glass of water. So they like to be cold. I usually take off the, the um, rubber band and then put it in the glass of water and then store it in the fridge like that. I picked dill this week. If you picked cilantro, same storage. Um, dill is really good with eggs. It's also really good with potatoes. There's a great dill veggie dip on the blog. Um, also great in like potato salad. We have potatoes this week. Um, cilantro, really good in salsas or Mexican dishes. Um, both get stored in the fridge, but if you're not ready to use them this week, they will last. Um, but if you know you're not gonna use them within the next week or two, you can freeze either, either of them, and I've talked about how to freeze them before to save them. Dill also dehydrates really well. Um, so I think I'm gonna dehydrate that dill um, just because I don't have a use for it this week so that it, I preserve it. And then that works with our preservation challenge we have going on. Um, which I forgot announcements, so we'll do those at the end. Um, besides dill and cilantro, and dill, the cilantro, um, we have a lot of items that would still work with salsas. So you could make a fresh salsa, you could freeze that salsa, you could can um, some stuff and put um, the cilantro in that as well. Okay, so we also have kale. Kale we wanna store in the fridge in a bag. So I use the Debbie Meyer green bags. I'm just gonna throw it in that green bag and store it in the fridge. Kale is really good for kale chips. Um, there's a kale Caesar salad on the blog. There's, um, kale was used in the autumn inspired green bowl. And I did use a whole bunch for that. Um, what else do we have for kale? You can preserve it, freeze it, and throw it in smoothies. Um, you can make a kale pesto. So that was earlier in the season. We had a kale pesto on the blog. Um, so lots of ideas there. This is one of the things you're gonna wanna use earlier within the week. So this and the next item we'll talk about, um, they're probably, your greens are what you wanna use first. So that gets used. Um, Lettuce, we have head lettuce. Head lettuce gets stored in a, a bag in the fridge. So we wanna keep it cold. We want these unwashed. So again, I put it in a Debbie Meyer green bag. Um, I don't wash it until I'm ready to use it. So obviously head lettuce is really good for salads. Um, you can use it for burgers. You can use it as wraps. So this has nice heavier leaves so you can use it as your your wrap for different um you could even do like a fajita and instead of using a wrap use the lettuce um you can chop it up you can serve it in tacos so lots of good ideas for for lettuce i feel like lettuce is pretty easy to use we also received arugula this week arugula is one of my favorite greens um, I just think it has so much flavor and it's obviously wonderful for you as well. Um, the vitamins and minerals in it are fantastic. So this gets stored in the fridge. Um, I love to serve this simple. So you can serve it as like your greens alongside, like let's say put a bur burger on top or you can serve um, different dishes with it just kind of as your serving green. But you can also make a salad out of it, which is my favorite way to use it. So I just like to make a simple vinaigrette, toss it in the vinaigrette, and then put like fresh shaved Parmesan or something very simple. You could do um, 
Like I don't like to put a lot of things in it because the flavor profile of arugula is, is so unique and delicious in and of itself. So I like to keep it really simple. Um, you can make an arugula pesto. Uh, you can definitely um, cook arugula. So arugula does not take long to cook, but it's really good in like pasta dishes. So if you cook your pasta dish and then at the very end throw the, your arugula in, it works really well in a pasta dish. So you could do like an arugula and um, roasted tomato dish. That would be really good. Or an arugula and chicken, um, maybe like a chicken Alfredo, something with a creamier sauce that works as well. So arugula is pretty versatile. It is a little bit of a spicier green, but it's so good. Um, so that is new this week and Trisha did a whole post on arugula. So that gets stored in the fridge, in the plastic, unwashed. Don't wash it till you're ready to use it. Okay, we'll jump right into our peppers since we have quite a few of them. We have Cubanelle peppers and we have um, sweet peppers. These are both stored in the fridge. I just throw them in the crisper drawer. They both can be eaten raw. Um, my kids love the sweet peppers in their lunches, so they cut them up and bring them for lunch or I'll um, slice a bunch up, put them out on the table for when they get home from school. We just made a big batch of sausage and peppers, so they work really, any of these work really well with that. Um, if you have an abundance of peppers, we highly recommend that you freeze them. So you can roast them and um, use them that way. You can eat them raw. We've been getting a lot of them the past few weeks. So if you still have some leftovers from last week, look at one of my posts from this week. It was for the preservation challenge, preserve the harvest challenge. Um, I did a whole sheet pan and I know Trisha did a post on that as well. She slices them up and freezes them. It's so easy. You just clean them, take the seeds out, take the stem off, put them on the, she sliced them in half. I made them fajita style, so I sliced them into slivers. Um, put them on the sheet pan, freeze them, and then once they're frozen overnight, you take them out, throw them in a Ziploc bag, and then um, they're stored for the for the winter. So I pull them out and we'll use them in like chilies or fajitas or sausage and peppers, anything where I'm gonna cook them. Obviously, I'm not gonna serve them um, raw because they will not retain their, their nice texture because we froze them. Um, but that's an option for those as well. And these can be used in salsa. So another idea for peppers. There's the farm is selling four pound bags. So if you really want to preserve a lot of peppers, you can buy a four pound bag at pickup. You do not need to pre-order. They have these already ready to go. They are $12 for four pounds. Um, you could roast these and make roasted peppers. You can slice them up in um, halves and freeze them. You can slice them into um, slivers and freeze them or into rounds. I've also done that. Um, so freezing, make it ro roasted peppers, serving them. You could stuff them. So you can actually stuff them and get them ready and freeze them that way. So if you do a double dish, if you're having stuffed peppers for dinner, double it up and make a second dish and freeze that. So then it's a nice easy dinner that you pull out and um, on, a, on a night where you just don't have time to prep all of that while you're doing is heating that or defrost it and then heat it. Okay, so that's some of our peppers. We also got to pick hot peppers. So I have a poblano and a jalapeno. There's hot pepper honey on the blog. Um, you're obviously using these for heat. So if you wanna do a stuffed pepper that has a little bit of spice to it, poblanos make a great option for that. Um, you can freeze these as well. So if you have, I know we've been getting four for the past few weeks. If you have a lot of hot peppers and you're worried about them not lasting much longer, you can freeze these whole. You can slice these in half, remove the seeds. Um, or you can slice them into slivers as well. So lots of options there for preserving if you're overwhelmed by our peppers this week um, or the past few weeks, I guess. Okay, we have our honey nut squash, our cute little mini butternut squashes. These have amazing flavor. Last week's blog post recipe featured these. Um, 
You can eat the skin, so you do not need to peel them. They're stored in a cool, dry place. They will not last months like a butter knot, so we want to use these within the next probably two weeks, ideally. Um, you can slice them in half and you can roast them. You can use them in different recipes. If you're if you still have butter honey, honey nut squash from last week, then you're more than welcome to like an idea of to preserve these is to cut them up. You can freeze them raw or roast them and then freeze the puree, which you can use um, down the line in different dishes. So that's one way to preserve them. We have spaghetti squash. So these guys are gonna last the longest. We don't need to worry about this. Um, you can roast these whole. You can slice it in half, remove the seeds, and roast them that way, or you can slice them into rounds. Refer to the blog for the round um, roasting post. Spaghetti squash is an alternative to pasta, usually. So we serve it either just with like a pesto, um, you can serve it with an oil and herb um, sauce. You can serve it with a spaghetti sauce, a tomato sauce. Um, or you can just serve it as a side with, with seasonings. So different options there. There's a couple different posts on the blog for spaghetti squash, but that will last the longest. We have three to four pounds of um, red beef steak tomatoes and they also have at the farm extra tomatoes for sale if you want extra beef steaks. These are great to slice for sandwiches, for burgers, um, just literally to slice and serve with a little sea salt. They get stored on the countertop, not in the fridge. We want them room temperature. Um, if you're still overwhelmed with tomatoes um, and don't really have a use for these this week, I highly recommend either doing a tomato sauce. Um, there's a roasted tomato sauce on the blog and freezing that or doing the tomato soup. I actually purchased some extra tomatoes this week and I'm gonna do a big batch of the tomato soup that's on the blog. Um, and then freeze that so we have quick, easy meals for the winter when we um, get a little bit busier. So that's our tomatoes. We have two sweet onions. Onions get stored in a cool, dry place um, away from potatoes. So the potatoes give off moisture, so we wanna keep these separate. Onions are great raw, so sliced really thin. You can throw them in a um, salad. They're great for onion soup, so we've been getting onions for a couple of weeks now if you're saving up um, and have some still left over for the last few weeks. They um, are great to make a soup out of. They're great to roast, put on a sheet pan with some other veggies and make a quick, easy meal. Um, this week's recipe will showcase the onions, or any onion in general, and the garlic. So stay tuned for that on Thursday. The garlic, stored in a cool, dry place. Um, we wanna use the cloves to help flavor different dishes. You can roast this, um, you can roast it whole. You just chop off the top and roast it. Um, you can use these, the cloves and salad dressings. So the hot pepper honey actually uses, um, the hot, peppy, pe hot pepper honey vinaigrette uses some garlic cloves. But this will last a little while, so a cool, dry place. You can store it like with your onions. Um, basically, we use garlic to, to help flavor everything. I love the flavor of garlic. So that is there. And last but not least, we have gold potatoes. We got a quart of these. These are stored in a cool, dry place. Um, Trisha had a post she cut into some and there might be some discoloration. It's totally fine. It doesn't affect the flavor and it doesn't affect the ability to eat them. It just has to do with, um, I think she said the weather, the um, weather patterns and the, the moisture and things like that that affect the, the inside look of the potatoes. So if you're slicing them up, don't worry about if there's any um, discoloration in them and refer to her post for more details because I'm not explaining it the best. Cool, dry place away from onions. These can be roasted. 
They can be um, peeled and boiled. We can do mashed potatoes. We can do um, just roasted potatoes. You can, they're big enough where you can slice them up and do little um, grilled potatoes. If you have an air fryer, these make amazing um, french fries, or you could make french fries in the oven or on the stovetop if you're um, frying them in oil. All right, I think that that is it for all of our items in our um, share this week, and I got thrown off with my, my stand not working. So jumping back to announcements. We have two quick announcements. I mentioned the peppers are available. There's also tomatoes available um, for purchase at pickup. And then there's also another volunteer opportunity this Saturday at the Percocy Farm, so where we do our CSA pickup, from nine to noon. You need to bring clippers and a chair. Um, I don't know what the weather is supposed to be on Saturday, but obviously water as well if you're gonna be there for a few hours. So anyone that's available, kids are more than welcome. It's a kid-friendly kid activity, but basically what anyone that shows up is going to be doing is helping our farmers trim the garlic and onion. Um, so they've been sitting in the greenhouses curing and they just need to be trimmed and ready for distribution. So we're gonna help our farmers do that. So if you're free on Saturday, feel free to show up at the farm. So it'll start at nine and around noon. And the farmers in advance appreciate any help they can get. So thank you um, for those of you that are available that can join them. Okay, if you have any questions, please post on here. I can go into more details on any of the items. If you are struggling with anything that you got in previous weeks that's still lying around and you're not sure how to use it, focus on that first. If you need help, I will gladly guide and give you ideas. So just post, tag me, um, and we'll get you to use those items first. Remember, we have our preservation challenge, Preserve the Harvest 2021 is the hashtag. Um, if you are preserving any of the produce that you get, including anything in the fruit share, um, please post a picture, give a quick description, and then use the hashtag Preserve the Harvest 2021. And it's a contest, so we're just seeing how many people post, what the different things they're doing are, whether you're canning or freezing or dehydrating, and whatever you're doing to preserve the produce we get throughout the season for winter time, let us know. And we will announce those winners when the contest is over. Okay, I will see you all next week and have fun using all of these wonderful vegetables this week. And stay tuned for the recipe, which is coming on Thursday.